Hey everybody, what's going on? Eric here. As you can see, I'm working on George's Epiphone Riviera and trying to get it done so I can get it back to him before uh, before this year is over with. I'm sure he wants his baby back. In this video, uh, I'm going to be working a little bit on the neck and kind of showing you the right way and wrong way of doing things. First, showing you the wrong way of doing things and then showing you the right way. So I will be using, for learning purposes, uh, the mistakes of other people other people, I guess that's how you said it. Anyways, I'll be using the mistakes from somebody else uh, for learning purposes in this video to show you what not to do. So there might be some bits and pieces inside this video, there may not be. So I have to say, uh, sorry George, I'm going to be using your guitar as a comical patsy again. No. All right, welcome back. The first thing we're going to do is I have my 125 and a half inch scale length notched straight edge here. No, that is wrong. This is a 25 and a half on one side and 24 and three quarters, which is the side we're going to be using, uh, notched straight edge. Purpose of this is to get your neck pretty much straightened out before you do any fret leveling, fret filing, you know, just, I always straighten out the neck on every guitar when I take the strings off. Um, kind of like maybe a pet peeve, make sure that the truss rod is working correctly. And uh, normally when I do this, when I straighten out the neck, I put a 12 thousandths relief of bow in the neck. And uh, usually when I straighten out the neck with this, I don't really have to adjust the neck too much with the tension on it from the strings. But certain Piapples out there really didn't know how to use this and uh, or even what it was used for, the proper way of using it. And uh, I'm going to show you a little bit. So basically what you want to do is you want to find out if your neck is straight. And this can also help you find out if your neck has a twist in it too. So one way of doing this is to basically put this on the edges of your fretboard and if there's a twist one side of the this would be up higher especially by mostly by the uh, headstock or there'll be a gap so what I end up doing with this is I'll put it in the middle of the neck now this neck is flat it is straight I've already straightened it out and I think the first video that I start taking this thing apart and what the purposes of this is for is, like I said, to make sure your neck is straightened out. Uh, if you end up putting this on your neck and you end up noticing that there is a little bit of a rock on either side, then you're looking at a back bow. If you are noticing that there's a gap in the center, and then you got a forward bow. And what you want to do is adjust the truss rod. Either truss rod is going to be at the top of the neck or sometimes at the bottom of the neck. Or sometimes you have to take the neck off in order to straighten out your neck. Which, those are a pain in the ass. Anyways, what you're looking for is any gaps on either side, in the middle. Uh, get a flashlight. You know, anything that has an LED will work great as far as trying to figure out if there's any light coming in anywhere underneath. You can use uh, feeler gauges, uh, get like a 4,000s feeler gauge and kind of tuck it in on the wood part of uh, the fretboard. And you can kind of feel if there is a gap anywhere over here. And you can tweak your neck in order to remove that gap. Nine times out of ten, some people will find maybe a gap in the center of the neck. And again, you'll just adjust your neck appropriately to get rid of that gap. So this neck here, I know is straight. And I don't have to worry about uh, anything as far as uh, if I was going to do a fret leveling. This does not need a fret leveling job. This basically just needs to be 
um, the polished frets and get the fretboard itself oiled. So let's get into that. So no matter what your choice of protection would be, either a condom or the pill, oh wait, totally different subject, masking tape. In this case, I'm going to use masking tape. Otherwise, I could use the metal sleeves that go over the fret and the fret sticks out of the top of the metal dirt notch and polish these guys up. But the way I'm going to polish this up, there's two different ways you could do it. Uh, I do not like using the steel wool way because uh, you have magnets over here and you have a nice finish on the body of your guitar. You're going to have to mask off the body of your guitar really good. Mask off the headstock because steel wool starts to break down as you rub it over things. Also, um, I would still protect the fretboard with some type of tape in order to, if you're going to use steel wool to do this, because that steel wool um, turns into a black powder and gets into the fretboard. So when you oil your fretboard, that rag or whatever you're using is going to have a lot of debris in it from the steel wool itself. That's why I really don't like using it. So I'm going to mask off this fretboard. They do have masking tape that is for masking off fretboards. And that's fine. You can use that. It's a little bit on the expensive side, but uh, I just use regular 3M masking tape. It seems to work pretty good and not have any problems. Now, this is the green, which is a little bit more tackier than the blue is. I'm out of the blue. Otherwise, I'd be using the blue because it doesn't leave too much of a residue at all on your fretboard when you peel it off. The green kind of does, so you're going to have to rub it out really good when you... Uh, do your oiling. So what I want to do is basically get up as close to the fret as possible. I also want to protect the headstock, which I'll do that in a little bit. Now I do not use any type of paper towels on guitars at all. That's one thing that I will not do uh, as far as wiping down the neck wiping down the body or anything else that has to do with the electric guitar. I'd rather use some type of a microfiber cloth. If you got it, use it. If you don't, use a terry cloth. It works out just fine. When you want to get as close to the front as possible. This is very time consuming. But in the long run, you'll be glad that you did this because when you're using the compounds or polishes or anything that you're using to polish your frets that is a liquid form, uh, that will get into the grooves that is basically the pores out of the wood. And when it gets into the pores of the wood, the problem with that is, is that it's hard to get out. And once it's in there, it sometimes turns into like a white... Uh, I don't know what you would call it, like a, a white chalk almost. It gets kind of uh, powdery after the shit dries up. And then next thing you know, you are, you know, you got white shit all over your fucking, your neck. All right, so as you can see here, I have the fretboard protected. I've got some rags on the body of the guitar. I also have one on the headstock of the guitar just to protect it from anything slinging or anything else or any sparks. So, George, how flat do you like your frets? Eric! No! So that really would have been tearing it. All right, so what I've got going on over here is I have my polish and I have the Dremel. So I'm going to go this route. Now, the only thing about using the Dremel is you're still going to have to wipe them down anyways after you Dremel them because it leaves a little bit of a residue on your frets. So first thing I want to do is I want to check to see if these frets are okay as far as uh, any scratches, any deep nicks, or, or anything that, that would make it hard for the string to be like stretched across the fret, where the string is going to get caught up on the fret 
because of some type of a scratch or a gouge or something going on with it. So what I end up doing is, it's a good reason why you have fingernails, because it works out perfect. Take your fingernail and kind of go over the fret a little bit from one side to the other. And if your finger gets caught on anything, then there is a scratch or a notch or some type of a little divot or whatever in the fret that could cause you to have have to do a fret leveling or use a piece of sandpaper to remove those deep scratches that your fingernail got caught in and George's neck feels all right yeah George's neck feels all right I don't know just bad jokes So what I'm going to do is, I've got a rag here that's clean, another microfiber cloth. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to put a little bit of, a little dab on each fret, just like so. Now I could use, could have used, the sleeve that goes over this, over the fret, and used a Dremel or, you know, used a rag to try to clean, polish, whatever the fret. Now, the problem with that is, is applying pressure. It's going to squeeze a little bit of this rubbing compound underneath that metal plate. Therefore, it's going to get on the fretboard. So this is going to be noisy, but it does work pretty good. And I found a nice cotton. This is a cotton uh, wheel, polishing wheel, for just doing, you know, this job works out great with it. So here we go. So then you get your rag again and you kind of wipe off whatever residue from the polish and see you're going to get black shit on there don't worry about that but i tell you what though you can actually see the difference between these three and the rest of them let's see if i can get you guys over there these are kind of dulled out. These are not anymore. All right, so I cheated. I got rid of all the tape, cleaned up everything. All the frets are done. They came out very, very nice, very, very smooth, very, very shiny. And uh, yeah, that's what you want. You want to have a nice uh, flat surface with no cuts, no scratches, no nothing in it. Makes that string slide when you're doing a bending or something. Uh, which I don't know if he, George does too much with that on this guitar. I don't know, maybe. So this next step here is why I have Q-tips. Now I don't just apply this shit with a rag, all right? This is the Dun Dunlop, um, Dunlop 65 lemon oil. And uh, the way that I apply this may be totally different than everybody else. But I do it like this because I know it's getting into the wood grain really, really good. So I'll take the bottle and I'll turn it over. And there's kind of like a little plunger inside here that you push on so it doesn't leak all over the place. I'll push on that plunger and I will soak the Q-tip with the oil. And basically what I'll do is I'll get in real close to the fret, real close to the nut and work it right in with the wood grain. Sometimes I need to apply a little bit more because I didn't really soak it too much. And do the same thing, close to the fret and go with the wood grain. And the reason why I use a Q-tip as well is because I can get close to that fret. So if I ended up getting a little bit of rubbing 
compound or, or the chrome polish more like I can wipe it off and get it out of the cracks and since this is cotton I can get in there roll into the wood grain and clean it up really nice and you can see that this does not take long at all reminds me I probably should have actually taken the string tension off these tuners before I'm doing this but the reality is is they're locked down by the nut to begin with so that's not necessarily a big issue all right so that reminds me what was wrong in that last video you don't want to remove the screws on the back of your tuners even though there is a nut on the other side that could be loose could be tight you don't know which string tension on your tuners in this case there are sleeves so there's sleeves on the other side you remove the screws on these tuners these things are going to spin with the tension on the uh, strings that nut is not locking so I guess George you have a locking nut on your Epiphone just like Terry's SG but don't worry George I'm not going to Terry it so what I want to do is tighten up just snug them up a little bit make sure that they're not loose Expansion and contraction of the wood in time can make these uh, screws come a little bit loose. Some of them are too nice and snug, and some of them are a little loose. So I just want to give them a little bit of a tweak. This guitar George has had for quite a while. I believe this is a 2005. I want to say and uh, you know things can come loose all right so those are snug didn't over tighten them didn't torque them down real tight to where uh, they're gonna strip the head or, or break the head off the screw or possibly strip the hole that they are threaded in so on the other side of this let's get going to I guess I could put strings on this thing now Wow, George getting it done for you all right, so before I could put strings on this thing, I need to put a good protective coating of wax on the face of this guitar and on the headstock. So I've already done that. It's not so shiny anymore or glossy. It's got a little bit of a sheen to it, and the wax is drying. So while the wax is drying, uh, I want to talk about some of the chemicals and polishes and everything. What happens to them when you let them sit over time? Now, 
just like Scratch Doctor rubbing compounds. The wax that I'm using for this guitar is the McGuire's Gold Classic. I used to use the McGuire's Tech Tech Wax um, on vehicles and stuff. Uh, you know, regular paint and stuff for that's on vehicles. And I noticed that it was leaving some streaking marks when you wipe it off. So I stopped using it and went with the Gold Classic. It seems to work pretty, pretty good. Now, with any type of a liquid, if it's been sitting for a little while, even if it's been sitting for a week, sometimes the chemicals inside of it will separate and you'll get like a water on top of the thicker liquid that makes up the wax. You want to make sure you shake this stuff before using it. Regardless if it's been a few days, a week, a month, year, or whatever, make sure you shake these guys up really, really good to get all of the liquid mixed with each other. So all the water that kind of separated uh, will get back mixed in back mixed in with the chemicals so this thing here should be about dry I got a wax on the headstock right now I already polished that and nicely that that George's headstock on this thing wasn't scratched up uh, bad at all I mean I'm very surprised this this whole guitar overall it was in good condition so I gotta get a clean rag again and this time I'm going to wipe off the wax that's on here. Now, when you wax something, you want to get close to the edges, but you don't want to get a real big buildup in all the corners and stuff. It makes it hard to wipe off. So I'm going to get a rag. And yes, I go through a lot of microfiber cloths. Unless if I'm using, say, the lemon oil with one of these, um, I will throw that rag away. But otherwise, you can wash these. So I'm going to go ahead and start rubbing out the wax that's on this thing. And when you're waxing something, you'll tell if that wax is not dry. It'll kind of like smear itself around. It won't, uh, it won't wipe off cleanly. It'll basically just kind of smear itself. So this thing is getting the full attention. And not because George is a friend of mine, but uh, I do this for basically everybody's guitar or any guitar that I've gotten that needs a little bit of TLC. All right, so this is polished up very, very nicely. I can go ahead and put the knobs on this thing. I can go ahead and start uh, getting the wax off of the headstock and start stringing this puppy up. I bet you George is going to be real happy to see that this thing is getting new strings on it. <coughs> All right, so as you can see, the guitar is strung up. I started making a video of putting the strings on this thing, and uh, my phone rang. My cell phone is what I use to make videos with, and come to find out that it actually stops the video as uh, uh, it's ringing, and then I just let it go to voicemail, thinking that it was still recording, and it stopped and it wasn't. So I don't have a video of trying to string this up. But guarantee what I'm going to say right now uh, is the truth. Because bees are a pain in the ass. And they, you do have to set them up kind of like a Floyd Rose when you're tuning them up, getting the, the balancing act going on where you have the compression on the uh, spring and the strings even themselves out to where you can get close to being in tune. But the problem with it is, is these stupid pins that they have uh, for the eye loops at the end of the strings. The eye loops want to pop out. So if you're not putting tension on that string as you're tightening up the tuner, uh, these will slide right off, the eye loops will slide right off those pins back here. And it becomes a little bit of a pain in the ass. Now, the roller bridge is installed. Now, the one thing, this is kind of like a Gibson style roller bridge to where it has a threaded rod. And then you have your adjustment ring uh, that's underneath the bridge. Um, a separate piece. It's not one piece like most guitars kind of are. Um, but this is set up like the Gibson style is. Now, when you install this type of a bridge, you want to make sure that threaded rod is kind of down in the hole a little bit to where it's either flush or not sticking up. Uh, otherwise, it just kind of makes it uncomfortable when you're playing or palm muting. And you'll, you'll have like a little piece sticking up and 
you know, kind of dig it in your hand. Now, the one thing I like about these roller bridges is if you do palm mute, they are very comfortable and you don't have a sharp edge or a sharp corner kind of digging into your hand to where, um, you know, after a while it just starts feeling, starts feeling sh like shit. Otherwise, everything's going okay with this thing. I got the knobs on it. The electronics are all good. Checked out uh, all the pickups and to make sure each one of them is situated where they're supposed to be uh, as far as where the knob location is. So that's all correct. I want to get into the um, neck relief, action height, and then after that, I'll get into the nut and then the uh, intonation on the bridge because you can't adjust your nut action height you can't set your bridge for intonation and then go and adjust your nut action height because if you're going to lower the nut a little bit, that changes the distance between the uh, bridge and the string or the saddle and the string. And it's also going to change the way you have the, your bridge set. So I'm going to go in right now and put a capo at the first fret. Pick up the guitar. I'm going to fret the guitar somewhere where the body meets the neck. And I'm going to go 7, 8, and ninth fret and check them out as far as now I can hear the 12,000s rubbing a little bit, but I do not see the string moving at all. And that's what I want. Now, like I said before, when you straighten out your neck, and I've noticed this with a lot of guitars, it seems like the same thing over and over again. When you straighten out your neck after you take your strings off, the string tension that you put on the neck uh, will pull the neck into around about the 12,000s mark uh, as far as what you were looking for in relief. And that's what I look for in relief. So right now, I am going to go over to the action side. And this will be adjusted over at the bridge, raising it up and down. And I'm looking for a 564 on the high on the low side. And on the high side, I'm looking for a 16th. And it's kind of the roundabout of what I like to play at. And it seems to be pretty good because a lot of guitars they'll sit there like something like this, they'll say like 764. That's too high for me. Um so I have 564 right now, and just a little bit of a tweaking. I've kind of gotten pretty good at eyeballing what the string action height would be like without the gauge. All right, I got 564 right now, and I'm looking for a 16th on the high side. And that's damn near fucking right on. Just to bring it down just a little bit. There you go. And remember, if you bring this at the action down, you're going to raise, start raising that pin up. Now, there is a notch in there for a flat head screwdriver, a jeweler screwdriver, and you can lower that back down, but you're going to have to go through the whole process of changing everything again. So right now, what I want to do is check to see... I know it's probably not in. Now I'm plucking this thing pretty hard. Plucking this thing pretty hard to see if I'm going to get any type of a fret noise, um, you know, fret buzz or something, or even a dead note coming from this fretboard at the action height that I have it set at right now. And that's a big no. The neck is good. The neck, the frets on the neck were a little bit wavy. Uh, not all of them, just a couple of them were up a little bit. I was able to tap that down like in the last video. I don't know if it was the last video or the video before that. And I, I just tapped them down a little bit. And uh, that straightened out the neck as far as the frets goes without having to do a fret leveling job. So I'm not going to set the intonation. I'm going to go right to the nut right now and check to see if the action height at the first fret is around say about 18 thousands that's kind of what i'm looking for but i did notice on this guitar that the the nut itself the strings are kind of sunken into uh the nut and i'll show you guys that when i start working on it and uh i've got to fix that so this looks pretty good let's get on to a different part now 
This video is brought to you by Blistex Medicaid Mint Balm. For when you have herpes on your lips and need a secret nut sauce for your guitar nut that is improperly cut. And remember folks, Terry uses it. That's right. Good old Blistex Lip Balm. In this case, medicated mint. <laughs> So remember folks, if you have herpes on your lips, or do not know how to cut a nut slot, try Blistex Medicated Mint Balm. Alright, so we're back again, and this time we are at the headstock of the guitar. We're going to focus on the nut action height, and the problem that this guitar has as far as the strings being too far in the nut itself. That can cause binding, that can cause uh, tuning problems. Um, if you do a string stretch and you end up uh, pulling the whole string when you're stretching the string, it doesn't want to go back and slide back into place where it's supposed to. Or if you have a binding nut to where it just, you know, you hear a ding every time you turn your keys. Well, this one here, um, I'm not too sure if George had a problem with that as far as binding at the nut goes. But I do notice that these strings are really deep inside of this nut. And the only way to correct that is to file off the top. Now, back years ago, I had a, back basically when I first started getting into this, I had a Squire bullet. And a friend gave it to me, and it was, uh, it was a piece of crap, okay? And I kind of liked that I was able to uh, fix it, work on it, and... Um, learn as far as how to work on guitars and that thing had a problem at the nut to where the strings would bind like crazy every time you turn multiple keys on that thing to tune up the guitar uh you would hear a ding at the first fret coming from the nut because that string was binding in the nut and it was kind of locked into place not a locking nut but just binding it so looking at videos on YouTube and stuff and reading a bunch of blogs about how to correct that I come to find out that a lot of people will use some type of a uh, a foreign material to say to kind of help with the binding at the nut but it's not a permanent fix this is something that is a temporary fix if you're playing a gig and you notice that you're having problems uh, with your nut and you're having a problem where uh, say you stretch a string and it won't go back in tune because it's binding at the nut itself uh, pencil lead would work uh, Vaseline white lithium grease any type of a lubricant that you can find um, lip balm is another one so this blistex thing all right it's a temporary fix it's not a permanent fix the only problem with putting a some type of liquid or, or paste at the nut on your guitar is that it's number one it's a temporary thing number two uh, you have a some type of a sticky lubricant now that can attract dust dirt and whatever else is in the air around you and in time uh, tuning the guitar and basically moving the string back and forth in a nut that's going to put that dirt and crap inside of the nut to where you're going to have other problems as well so putting some type of a lubricant on your nut uh, is just a temporary thing fix it do it the right way learn how to do it the right way I'm going to put my secret nut sauce on that's right Good old Blistex lip balm. So here's George's nut off of his guitar, and I think I'm just going to lubricate it to make sure that uh, he doesn't have any binding problems instead of working on it and cutting the nut slots appropriately and uh, getting things pretty much organized and stable with his guitar before I give it back to him. So I think what I'm going to do is, since I don't have any Blistex, uh, because I don't have any herpes on my lips, I'm going to use white lithium grease. So this ought to lube this up really nice. So let's see, I'm going to put a nice healthy, nice healthy lump sum all over that nut. There you go. Now that's going to work out great. I'm sure George is going to appreciate his nut not binding anymore. <laughs> 
All right. <clears throat> All right, so we're getting to the final stages of this setup, and uh, believe you me, I'm kind of glad it's getting done. Um, I'll get this back in George's hands. I'm sure he he's waiting for it. So what we're doing next is we're going to check out the uh, nut action height at the first fret. A couple ways you could do this. There's a harder way and an easy way of doing it. Now, this is a caliper, not a micrometer. It's a caliper. You can measure in inches and millimeters. You can zero it out. What you would use this for is basically pulling out the pin on the back and you set this pin on top of your fretboard and push it down until this edge here was on top of the fret. Not that hard to do. Very simple. Push down on the top of it and you can get a pretty good accurate reading of what the fret is as far as how tall it is. Now there is an easier way of doing this, which I will show you. Get anything that is a straight edge, preferably metal, not plastic. In this case, we're going to be using the front rocker. And all sides of this front rocker have been machined flat. So I know that this is going to be a nice flat straight edge and I can use it to measure how I want to measure it with the frets. So I've got already two feeler gauges here, one at 20,000, 24,000s and one at 14,000s. And I've already checked to see what the height is of this fret. So what I'm going to do is take this fret rocker, stick it on top of the fret, and kind of like get it to where it's, it's on, by the nut, but not on top of the nut. And you could feel, if these, if I had too many here, you'd feel that rocker kind of move upwards. Right now, what you want to do is you want to feel the feeler gauges rubbing the bottom of the rocker, but not pushing it up. And in this case, I'm looking at 38 thousandths is the height of this fret. So I want to add another 20 thousandths to that. Now that's going to give me what I need as far as to remove for the string to be 20 thousandths at the first fret. So there's some play here. It's not touching the... Uh, feeler gauges at all so I could pluck the string so what I need to do is I need to lower that down now you want to use the right files for the job and in this case here that's kind of what I have the right files for the job so I'm going to go ahead and get one file out loosen the string move the string off to the side and what I want to do is I want to notch that down, but I'm going to do it using these feeler gauges. So what I'm going to do is put the feeler gauges right there. Make sure that they're flat on the fretboard. And I'm going to go ahead and angle this towards the peg head. And just remove the little material that is there. And right now that should give me my 20 thousandths action height at the first fret. So I'll go and grab my 20 thou. And just a little bit more, here more. Yep, just a little bit more. You don't want to overdo it too fast too soon. You want to sit there and make sure that you are basically getting it. You want to get it perfect. You don't want to fuck this up. So, got this on here. I'm going to angle this towards the peg head. hear it rubbing away put that back on there tighten her up grab my 20 hear that rubbing on there 
we're at 20 thousandths. So I'm going to continue to do the rest of the nut the same way. And I'll come back and we'll start taking a little bit off the top of this nut because now I just made that string go further into the nut. I'm going to have to shave off the top. So I'll be back with that. All right, so the nut is done as far as getting the nut slots down in the action height at the first fret. Instead of 20 thousandths, I kind of figured I'll go with an 18 thousandths, uh, make it a lot more smoother playing it up here at the top of the neck. And also, plucking the strings pretty hard and no buzzing at the first fret. Now, moving from my climate to George's climate, uh, there might be an issue with the neck as far as changing it and, you know, depending on the temperature out by him and humidity, uh, he might have a little bit of a change or fluctuation in the neck. If he does end up having a little bit of fret buzz at the first fret uh, after tuning it up when he gets it, um, maybe it needs a little bit more neck relief depending on his climate i can walk him through that if he starts getting any buzz going on over here and i can walk him through like the you know what the, i have the action height and everything else or he can refer back to this video to you know learn how to do it himself not a big deal um yeah so right now i need to knock off the top of this nut because these strings are kind of sunken in there a little bit too much now before it was kind of quite a bit, now it's a lot more than what it used to be, so I need to loosen up all the strings again. And go ahead and remove the strings from the top of the nut. And same thing on the other side. Because this is where I'm going to get my file out and shave that nut down. So I think that I'll be using this file or do you think that'll be a bit too much? You know, I really don't want to tear it. Yeah, I don't think so. All right, so I got my file here and what I want to do is I want to protect, hopefully this tape will stick because I have wax on the headstock. I'm going to protect the headstock and I want to protect the fretboard. And now what I want to do is I'm going to use the file to kind of skim off the top over here, keeping the pitch and the angle of the nut itself, but just dropping it down more so I can get a good uh, Get the strings to sit in there and really nice. So I'm going to take this very, very easily. Follow the arch of the nut. All right. I really think that I'm pretty much there. No debris over here. My strings back in place. Well, getting closer. Getting closer. Looks like the middle part needs some more. I think that'll probably do it. Oh yeah, much better. Much, much better. Strings are not buried, buried in the sand anymore. So let me get this thing tuned back to pitch. Now, George should have no problem with this thing uh, having any type of a nut bind. 
So I just put it on enough that it fills the slots. All right, so it's getting to the nitty gritty. Put all my tools away. I just have everything that I need out right now, which is a jeweler's flathead screwdriver, a jeweler Phillips, uh, capo, feeler gauges, and the action height gauge. Right now, what I want to do is I want to check the intonation out. And then after I set the intonation, I'm going to go over everything and see if everything is at where it's supposed to be, where I left it. So I'm going to start off on the low E. And get that tuned up. Pretty simple, beautiful. So that part is done. And next thing I'm gonna do is just go over everything with the capo and the feeler gauges and then the action height. And hopefully everything will be basically done and I can finish polishing this thing up and send it back to George. So fun times, George, it's coming to you. It'll be sent to you soon. Uh, hope you guys enjoyed this video. Sorry it was so long, but uh, it kind of takes a uh, little bit of time to you know, put things together and get things right. Now I want to put the pick guard back on here. Well, I'm not too sure if George wants to pick guard back on here or not. I'm going to have to ask him about that. Anyways, folks, take it easy. Do a good job on your guitars. Don't follow the guy that is messing things up. If you have to question what somebody else is doing, look it up someplace else because Bad information is not good information, and if you go ahead and use that information that is bad information, you're going to end up screwing up really bad. And you know, just because it works doesn't mean it's right. Make sure you do it right. Make sure you get everything the way it's supposed to be, and you'll have a nice, playable instrument that is comfortable to you, and you're able to do a lot with it. Rock on, folks, and take it easy.